Today is the 1st of March and officially the BAPS Hindu Mandir in Abu Dhabi has been thrown open to the public. It's a through slew of uh, bhaks or devotees who have come there, but people from all walks of life, very curious to see Sanatan or Dharma in the desert, as many are calling it. Something which is unprecedented. Let's uh, on the sidelines of the 13th WTO Ministerial, we have the ambassador to the UAE, Sanjay Sudhirji. Ambassador Sahab, thank you very, very much. First up, historic moment and historic day. It's thrown open to the public today. Certainly a historic day because this temple is so special. Uh, it started off in 2015 when uh, Prime Minister Modi mentioned this issue to uh, uh, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed and without batting an eyelid, uh, the approval was there. And after that, uh, during one of the subsequent visits of Prime Minister in 2018, he uh, unveiled the replica of this, uh, this temple. Yes. And then in spite of COVID, the temple is complete, and you see, and you see the magnificence of it. You see the scale of it. This is uh, certainly the largest Hindu temple in this part of the world. Uh, it's a piece of art. It's become a tourist attraction, and the kind of uh, draw which the temple is, is uh, having. You have already seen it during your visit there. But what I can share with you is that even during the construction process, every weekend there will be thousands and thousands of devotees. Uh, coming to just lay bricks, yes. contributing by way of their, you know, of their shraddha, which we call, what do you call? Uh, devotion or seva. Yes, yeah, seva, seva, seva. Seva bhav, you know, you yes. could just see it. It was uh, to be seen, to be believed. And today the temple is there. Uh, it, it's a temple which also reflects the depth of our relationship mm -hmm. as two countries. It reflects the importance of our people-to-people -people contact. It reflects the harmony and tolerance, which is an integral part of the ethos of this country. True, 60,000 people have uh, contributed towards laying the foundation. It's got sovereign guarantee and sovereign protection. You served in the Maldives before. You're here in the UAE. How is it that two is largely Islamic nations have very different tone and approach towards Bharat? If I may ask you. Well, uh, I can tell you about the UAE because that's where I am uh, accredited today. This is perhaps the, one of the strongest relationships which, ha which we, have, we have today. And significantly transformed in the last 10 years ever since Prime Minister Modi made his first visit in 2015. Since then, he has made a total of seven visits. Yes. Now, whether it is uh, trade, whether it is investment, whether it is... Uh, things like the BAPS temple, whether it is uh, cooperation in fintech, in education. You've heard about the, yeah. uh, the first campus of IIT Delhi anywhere in the world is in Abu Dhabi. And the first cohort actually met the prime minister during his visit a couple of weeks back. Yeah. So this is a very multi-dimensional relationship. And perhaps today, one of our most happening and one of more, our most strategic relationships. May I ask you what's changing? The Middle East was not uh, such disposed towards Bharat in the past. There have been huge trade and there has been uh, exchange, there have been remittances, but it was very transactional in nature. This is going beyond just being transactional. There is true friendship or maitri. So is it personal equations between the two leaders or have, has the approach here itself in the Middle East changed? We're seeing some change, moderation coming through in Saudi Arabia. There is there uh, that, that sense of moderation even here in the UAE? Well, the temple itself is an example of uh, the civilizational old connect between Bharat mm. and the UAE and the people of the two countries. Uh, it's, a, it's a real symbol of that. Uh, the fact that the devotees you see at the temple, the people who visit the temple, the people who have contributed to the temple, and the 6,000 people you mentioned, have the bricks, are not from one religion mm. alone, Correct. are not from one nationality alone. So that itself is sort of etched in the, I wouldn't say brick and mortar of the temple because uh, the temple main structure does not have mortar. You know, it, it is a, it's a very unique architecture of just blocks of uh, stone. stone. In the Nagara yes. Side, yes, yes. But then uh, it's very much a part of the temple. This kind of uh, ethos of harmony. My final question to you, sir: uh, How do you see this equation developing? And uh, is Bharat now perhaps a stronger friend in this entire region? Is the, is the behavior of nations like Saudi Arabia and the UAE going to influence Bharat's equation with the rest of the Middle Eastern world? 
As I said, there has been a significant transformation in this relationship between India and the UAE. Because before Prime Minister Modi's first visit in 15, the previous visit was in, was in 1981, 34 years back. Today. And now it's a, it's a very deep relationship with a strong future, I would say. Mm -hmm. Just to give you a few examples, uh, the IMEC framework which was signed, so if you recall, it was just a few months back during G20 Leaders Summit in Delhi mm -hmm. that IMEC was announced. Today, the IMEC framework between India and the UAE is in place. And that's, a, again, a very, I would say, a strategic, a symbol of a strategic relationship between the two countries. Because although this project covers so many other countries uh, between India and uh, Europe, yeah. but then India and UAE being, uh, being the first two countries, uh, we took that step mm. to start off on this project. But the regional disturbances won't derail this on IMEC? Yeah. So that is exactly what you have seen that regardless of uh, uh, you know the, the, the geopolitics of the region, our two countries have gone ahead and signed the, yeah. the framework agreement. So that being the first two countries in the IMEC uh, structure, we at least start. Correct. And then you know I, these the, these regional disturbances are not permanent. If you look at it in the historical context, uh, they will settle down. Yes. Uh, and by the time we, they, they settle down, we would have at least progress, and then we could take the progress further. Uh, towards Saudi Arabia, Jordan, and then right across to the Mediterranean and connected to Europe. In fact, the, the disturbances you, which you spoke about are all the more a reason why IMEC is so important. important. Our leadership has always been talking about alternate supply lines. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, COVID in that sense was such, a, you know, such an eye-opener for everybody. Mm -hmm. But to act concretely on it is something different. So with IMEC, uh, I think we have acted on it. And uh, our two countries, India and the UAE, have uh, made some concrete progress on it. Yes, we've pulled you aside on the sidelines of the WTO 13th Ministerial, but very soon we'd seek time and come and sit down and talk proper on these relationships. But for the moment, thank you very, very much, sir. Thank you very much, and Alan was silent, as they say.